Welcome all. I'm joined today by the Ambassador of the Netherlands to Armenia, Mr. Nico Schemers. So Ambassador, thank you very much for your time. Last time we spoke, quite a while ago, you had re presented your credentials and you were quite new to the country, but now you've spent uh, quite a bit of time in Armenia. Um, you have been posting even on Twitter photographs of the time you're spending around the country and the countryside as well. What can you tell us about your time in Armenia so far? Yeah, well, um, from that perspective, it was really a marvelous time. Um, Armenia is a fantastic country to, uh, to live in, to, uh, to explore. Um, and that is what I like to do on Twitter, to um, share that with uh, my compatriots in the Netherlands, with uh, in particular also the um, Armenian diaspora in the Netherlands, who asked me to, um, to keep them updated on my findings in Armenia. Um, but I also see that many Armenians appreciate um, that I'm appreciating uh, your country. And that is uh, exactly what, uh, what I think the country also uh, can use it in, in these dark times. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I'm very glad that I can bring that positive note. And there's so much to see. It's uh, really uh, magnificent. I, I really enjoy it. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. And um, let's speak a bit about the relationship between Armenia and the Netherlands. Uh, what projects is the embassy working on at the moment? And um, what sort of priorities do you and your team have going forward? Um, yes, well, we have um, priorities in a couple of areas. First of all, I would like to mention uh, the rule of law, uh, democracy and human rights, uh, where we try to focus on supporting the democratic institutions uh, of Armenia. We've seen a lot of, um, well, um, things happening in the country in, in the last year. Uh, my colleagues in The Hague were sometimes very concerned about what they saw. Uh, but I always tell them this is democracy at work. What I see is that people are talking to each other, institutions are perhaps um, not uh, agreeing, but uh, in the end, it's all done by words. Um, and uh, your country had elections in June, a new government uh, operating in August, September. My own country is still waiting for a new government. Uh, we had elections in March already. So in that regard, I think uh, um, Armenia is doing a good job, uh, but we like to support wherever we can. In the field of human rights, we uh, have a couple of priorities as well. And uh, as you know, last week started the um, Orange the World campaign um, against gender-based violence. Uh, that is what we very much support. But in more general terms, I would say that uh, we try to support um, the, the, well, the development of gender equality in general. And yesterday I was, for instance, in Gyumri to um, support Alvan Sarik, uh, an organization we are supporting there. Um, they did a project in, um, well, trying to find out what uh, hurdles exist for women to work. Um, so we try to, uh, to focus on that kind of activities. And uh, finally, in, in terms of human rights, um, also, um, of course, we support as the Netherlands um, uh, LGBTI issues. We know it's um, a sensitive issue in uh, Armenia, but still we think it's important to fight for the rights of everyone, to include everyone also in Armenia. Um, and then on the economic side, we try to focus on uh, agriculture. I think I mentioned that last year as well in the interview, um, but we are getting more and more concrete in, in those terms. Um, agriculture, uh, greenhouses, um, there's a lot going on in Armenia. Um, there are a lot of Dutch uh, companies interested to work in these uh, sectors, um, in, in the greenhouse sector, but, but also wider. Uh, so we are supporting a couple of projects to get a clear picture of what is going on and how we can support the, um, well, the, the interaction between uh, Dutch-based companies and Armenian-based companies. Um, and I hope with uh, great success, but time will have to tell. Um, Furthermore, um, IT is, of course, an interesting sector also for the Netherlands. Uh, we have quite a lot of big companies in, in that area, and they are certainly looking uh, to Armenia. But also, I was surprised to find Dutch companies um, outsourcing uh, textile production to Armenia. 
where they used, used to, um, to do that to countries like Pakistan and Bangladesh. Uh, they have uh, or they are diverting to other parts of the world and Armenia is included in that list. So that is a new sector that uh, came to my attention in, in recent years. And um, in any case, we keep an eye on all these sectors uh, that might develop uh, water design, uh, some uh, interesting design companies active here uh, from the Netherlands. Um, and uh, yeah, wherever we can support uh, Armenian companies in that regard, um, we'll, uh, we'll try to do that. And in terms of the LGBTQ uh, community, the embassy was also involved, I believe, with the right side NGO. And also I saw on Twitter you were in Arctic um, at the opening of a greenhouse, I believe, that was uh, to do with the agricult uh, agricultural sector. But in terms of your time in Armenia, were there any priority ideas that are now floating in your mind new ideas uh, that um, may be on the roadmap going forward? Well, I participated in the, uh, the Prime Minister's um, um, uh, cycle event around Lake Sevan. And uh, well, that is certainly an area um, where uh, the Netherlands would like to see more Armenians on, on bikes. And uh, I've noticed also here in Yerevan, it's getting um, more popular, but therefore also more dangerous. And I think that at some point, um, well, you need to start thinking of how to organize that. And I think that is where the Netherlands can uh, certainly step in. Water management is, of course, another uh, area where we are. Um, I have quite some expertise in, the, in, in our country. 20% of, of the Netherlands is below sea level. So we're managing quite a lot of water. Um, and uh, yeah, in that regard, I'm happy to, uh, to explore possibilities there as well. And. Um Many people believe when they come to Armenia, uh, other analysts say as well, that the civil society in Armenia is very vibrant. And though some have the opinion that political institutions may be dysfunctional, it's interesting that the civil society uh, could be described as very vibrant. I'm interested what you think of, of this perception and how um, countries like the Netherlands can support Armenia's civil society and why that's important. Well, I think it's important to have a vibrant civil society to, um, to participate in uh, lawmaking, in governing, uh, in all issues that um, civilians in a country um, may come across. So um, it's, it's clear that they are often the conscience of, of the country towards um, the, the, well, democratic institutions. And they, give, um, they are probably the first um, source for the government to learn what is going on uh, in the population. Um, so it's, it's very important to, um, to, to voice that, to, to give um, a plat or to create platforms to, um, uh, yeah, to, to have a vibrant civil society. Um, that is why we support it. Um, well, the critics on, on um, the, the society in uh, Armenia, I must say that it's, uh, I see it's um, uh, very well developed. Um, sometimes indeed a, a little bit of lack of capacity, but uh, yeah, that is, that is obvious. Uh, I think um, civil societies in many parts of the world are uh, struggling with that. Um, it's, it's not um, a job you get rich, uh, rich off. So um, they are struggling to find resources and we are ready to, um, uh, yeah, to support wherever we can. Uh, most of our programs are always directed through NGOs. So that also helps um, uh, the civil society to flourish. Mm. And in terms of uh, the situation in the country, Armenia is still facing a critical situation. Many POWs are still being held in Azerbaijan. There are border incursions occurring in the eastern and southern regions of Armenia. Highways in the southern region of Armenia have been blocked by Azerbaijani forces. Um, I'm wondering how does the Netherlands view the situation, the conflict with, uh, between Armenia and, and Azerbaijan, what it has to say about this uh, occurrences? Well, first of all, let me s s uh, say that um, we are glad that um, diplomatic efforts are uh, gearing up and that in, in that regard, um, there's a lot to be said about the meeting, of course, last uh, week, but uh, we're very glad that um, we're uh, at that level now. Um, we are supporting the OSCE Minsk group co-chairs uh, wholeheartedly to, uh, to lead this process. Uh, so everything we do will be in the context of what um, their 
leadership demands. Um, but of course, it's also up to Armenia and Azerbaijan themselves to, um, yeah, to develop uh, this course and, and to develop um, relations over time. And of course, that will take time. A lot has happened. Uh, a lot of damage has been done. Um, and a lot of, lot of damage is still being done. Uh, so we are quite outspoken in, in that regard. Prisoners of war should be returned and released um, as soon as possible, as international law describes. Uh, so yeah, that is uh, more or less the position of my government, um, all in the context of the OSCE, but uh, POWs uh, have to be returned. Mm -hmm. And often um, in terms of deeper relations between Armenia and the Netherlands and also Armenia and the European Union, uh, the SEPA agreement, the Comprehensive Enhanced Partnership Agreement, has been ratified by all member states of the European Union. A common aviation agreement has also been uh, signed. What are the prospects, in your opinion, about the future of Armenia-Netherlands, but also Armenia-EU relations? Do you think that we're going to see a further deepening of relations? Um, I think we are seeing that already. Um, when I arrived, we had officially, I think, 13 Dutch people living in Armenia. Um, at the moment, uh, I think uh, that is several dozens. Um, that is partly because they were never registered, but partly also because I know that uh, several Dutch people have been migrating to uh, Armenia. And some of them uh, have an Armenian background, but not all. Um, so that is uh, certainly a positive development. Um, I think that also in, in uh, yeah, terms of economic relations, cultural relations, we see a lot of things happening. Uh, the Netherlands and Armenia will celebrate in January 30 years of diplomatic relations. Uh, we hope to, um, uh, well, to organize a number of events together also with the embassy of um, Armenia in The Hague. Uh, to mark this milestone. And I'm pretty sure that in the years to come, those relations will only further enhance. Uh, yeah, and of course, that has a reflection uh, on the European level. I think that uh, the similar things are happening in other member states. And basically, uh, yeah, the SEPA agreement uh, was signed and ratified, but more importantly, it needs to be um, implemented. And I think that we as bilateral embassies, but also the EU delegation, are working hard to, um, to do that, to give shape to that agreement. Um, and yeah, not uh, so that we don't have to talk about the agreement itself, but we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And finally, Ambassador, you've spent a great deal of time traveling around Armenia. And as someone who has seen quite a few corners of Armenia, what is your favorite thing about it? What would you say to someone who hasn't been to Armenia? What is different about traveling around Armenia? Um, well, the many things are different, um, but what I really, uh, I'm always amazed by, of course, the, the Ararat on the one hand, but Aragats um, on the other hand. Um, every time I drive into the country, uh, it changes uh, its, its view. Um, it's fantastic to walk into that um, area to, uh, to climb the, the summits. Um, but uh, it's also fantastic to um, well to do some of the um, uh, to enjoy the kitchen of Armenia. Tomorrow morning I'm going to um, to eat uh, khash uh, for the second time uh, um, in, in Armenia. So I'm looking forward to uh, to that. Um, uh, I like to taste wines. Um, there's so much to do. The uh, yeah, uh, absolutely Armenia is a fantastic country to explore. Well, Ambassador, thank you as always. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us on CivilNet.